this game. It's going to be that quick triple CC into a Raven opener. A Raven is kind of interesting. Obviously, the unit did get a couple of adjustments recently. It's now a bit cheaper since the new multiplayer balance patch. Very, here in yeah. the middle of the map. Really slow play so far. Let's see how quick Solar pulls. Only one drone, not bad. It's a little bit of mining time, but the Raven, of course, able to keep doing that over and over again. Uh, quick lair and Baneling Nest, so Baneling Speed will be the main goal for Solar. And that's very important because this is such a short map where Baneling Speed is going to give you the ability to control and, and push back these big Terran armies. Maru's loved his aggressive early mid-game styles, and he almost always starts a series off swinging at the Zerg. Mm -hmm. Maru may be known as the late-game god, but he never goes straight to late-game. It's only once he falls behind or, you know, the, the game calls for him to turtle up that he does it. He's going to keep on swinging. And he's got four barracks on the way behind this. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a big eight racks uh, follow-up where Maru just goes pedal to the metal on the aggression. Yeah, this is exactly the Maru we all know and love. He likes playing that big macro game, but it's very map dependent as well, right? And so far his aggression is working out very nicely in this match. He's going for a lot of additional barracks, like you already pointed out. Solar opting to play that Mutaling Bane style primarily. So the Baneling speed does start up after the Spire. This does, however, mean that his Evo Chamber upgrades are going to be a little late, and those Marines are really going to pack a punch. 1-1 one, one has only just started for a Solar. In fact, only Carapace for now. He didn't start the melee. First Marine tank pus uh, pushes in position in the north, but this could get shut down really hard if he's got Banelings ready. I don't know how much ground army Solar has. The Muters are going to rotate around and maybe find some damage. They're going to go in for the counter. Losing the fifth and the fourth base. This is definitely really hurting Solar's production. Muta's getting into the main base though, and Maru did not know about them until right now. He must have realized, wait a second, where is the entire army of my opponent? He now loses a ton of SCVs inside of the main base. Reinforcement wow. to deal with this, but I mean, they're trickling out one at a time. There's a missile turret starting up at the third base, but it's not done yet, and more damage will be executed. Oh, there's some medevacs there, but he does pull back for now. More SCVs grabbing one of these medevacs on the way out would be nice, but no, gonna go Siege tank, even better. Ooh. Big juicy pickups here for Solar. Unfortunately, Solar did not remember to start melee during all the heat and the action, and that means his upgrades are very far behind. On the other hand, Maru didn't start his 2-2, so the upgrade gap is kind of closing as this game gets scrappy, down and dirty. First game of the day, Maru's going to try and counterattack across the map. The muters are not going to let him do that easily. The lack of fourth base is really hurting Solar at this point, right? Like, he's not been mining as much as you normally are in a game like this. Solar, he's going to have to defend against this massive Terran force that's now in the middle of the map, and the Siege Tanks are getting into really good positions here. If Solar can flank this army, he'll smash it. He might even be able to just go right now from the front. He has large numbers. The tanks are getting deep. Solar can't wait much longer. Those tanks are in range of his ramp. He's setting up a surround right now. Solar, that is, as he tries to collapse on top of this Terran army from multiple angles. A lot of the army coming from the south. There's a huge bio force right there at the bottom of the ramp. Oh. And Siege Tank on the right is getting so much damage done. And there was a massive Widow Mine on the Muters that also got a bunch of Banelings as well. That is, you can see Solar's face. He knows he's been overwhelmed. Oh, she'll be okay. That one, Barracks, is going to be used to kill an Overlord. Is that what we're doing? Yep, yeah. I like it. Third Command Center on the way behind this as well. And I'm keeping an eye on that production tab because Maru's definitely got a bit of special source coming out of this build. He doesn't know about the Hellions. So you see those uh, couple of Reapers leading the path right here. Well, now Ooh, the nice spotted. catch. Yeah, that is a really nice catch also because he now sees those Hellions coming in. Okay, so this is no longer going to be a surprise and I don't suspect that Solar will take a lot of damage. Look at the rally of the Queens getting into the main base. They are ready to defend, although, well, they need to be in the right place. This is a crazy commitment from Maru. That, that This is absolutely wild. There's, there's no reason why he should have gone in there. Maru making an uncharacteristic mistake there. And Solar now feeling so good about his position. He's going to be soaring ahead. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who was worried that this series might get out of control after game one, I feel like Solar now is poised to play an overwhelming macro game. In theory, Solar should have all of the tools at his disposal to defend this. Yep, equal army supply for both sides. 1-1 one, one upgrades are finished for the Terran, though, and Widow Mines always have the ability to get a big explosion off. Nice transfusers on the Queen's for now, but uh oh, that's a lot of Marine firepower. Yeah, those Widow Mines do detonate here eventually. There's that Spore Crawler in the edge of the main base, moving on over. There's wow. A couple of them dealing a lot of damage to those Medifex. Big drop in the main, though. Very nicely done right here by Maru. He uses his units very effectively right there between those mineral fields and those Zerg structures to optimize the amount of damage. Don't lose a Medifex on the way out there. High risk, high reward play from Maru here, working that angle. We saw Bion working that yesterday against Serral as well. It is a good drop path. 
And Maru does get a decent trade, getting six drones and a bunch of mining time, and most importantly, making Solar feel a little bit panicked. Now, behind this, we do actually have a fourth command center and a second factory, which are basically the tells that Maru wants to play a longer mm. game. You get the second factory, you can have drilling claws, siege tank production, or Thors. Trying to put that creep spread down once again, because he knows there's going to be big attacks following these as well. Maru, in the meantime, by the way, has got his fourth command center up in that very tricky position right there on the uh, the left side of the map. This is one of those spots that's quite difficult for the Terran to secure, but once they get it up and running with a planetary fortress, it is really nice to fall back to. Still trying to work this angle. I feel like this is always such a point of contention on this map. Right around that ridge line, the Terran can retreat to, and oh, he actually gets that base! Solar's fifth base snipe down. Bainley's got some good connections, but he's got to watch out for the Widow Mines! Oh, yeah. Oh, really man. nice connections right there for the Terran player, who's just been, yeah, one step ahead every time with this aggression. Look at him picking up right there, just barely in the nick of time, losing just a single Marine, I believe. And now Solar, I mean, he needs to rebuild his economy, but he's trying to go for Lurkers. Lurkers can shut down this tempo advantage that Maru has been establishing, but he's not really properly there yet. He really needs those Lurker upgrades as well. I agree with you there, Loco. It feels like the Lurkers aren't going to be hitting the scariest timing because tank and ghost production is already well underway. Vipers will help against the tanks, and Lingbane Hydra Viper can take on this army. But because there's still the fear of the Biomine, Solar is, of course, down in supply. He's still trying to catch up on the upgrades. I think the idea of a Ling Run Bite is always good. Anything he can do to pick Maru's attention away, those Lurkers oh. helping hold on for now. Maru wants to snipe that fifth base once again. Yeah, he's considering stimming into the Lurkers here, but it's a very dangerous decision. You need to make sure that you are very prepared to commit as he does now finally snipe one of them, but he's forced to back off. Wow, okay, the Vipers have popped in a gathering energy behind this. The sixth base does get, can get cancelled. Fifth base almost finished rebuilding. Ling run by on the left side comes in. But the wall is raised, and the Lings aren't really getting that much done. It looks like maybe a ghost, but no. Nice micro from Maru. The ghost gets out. A few SCVs will fall. But at the end of that, of course, a good trade for uh, for Sola just to pull the army back and distract him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's getting a, a good trade here, getting a couple of goes. I think that's the third one going down. A few SCVs, but most importantly, that pressure has been alleviated, right? It's now no longer right there on top of his fifth hatchery. So that means he can go back to mining. He can start getting those late game upgrades as well. It was looking really, really dangerous right there for Solar momentarily, but... He's crawling his way back into this game right now. And once he finishes up all those late game upgrades, this game is going to look a whole lot better for him. If Solo can deny a base, the fifth base going, that'll be great. But he's still going to deal with these Widow Mine drops. And they are very annoying. Just taking out a few Lings and a drone. This one in the natural does finally get Ooh. shot down. And that's very nice for Solar. But yeah, he's got to get a move on in terms of stopping Maru. Maru is now switching gears to macro. He's going three commands and he's building a planetary on the fifth base. These are things that Solar does not want to let get up because he is right now investing into Lurk Attack, which is not the greatest tech the longer this game goes. Oh, and that sight blocker working Whoa. against Solar there. At least the one Lurker right there manages to escape, but only for a little while. The Queen's trying to transfuse so many cost-efficient trades here for Maru throughout this game so far. Yeah, look at the resources lost. I mean, honestly, considering the amount of mining they've been doing, the resources lost isn't really even that big yet, but I yeah. think those numbers are going to be pumped up very shortly because Maru is ready to mine out. Well, basically every mineral field he can get his hands on. Oh yeah, he's going to play that methodical game. So many commands, and it's a third factory, four ghosts building at a time. Vehicle weapon upgrade starting, of course. Maru wants to get towards plus three siege tanks, but also plus three blue flame hellbats as the game goes long enough. And uh, we'll see exactly... Oh! Oh, 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 fight over here in the middle of the map. He's trying his best to back off once again. EMP on the Viper. Gonna make it difficult for Zerk. To oh, oh, Solar's attacking around a corner. This is a really nasty fight for Solar. Oh. He has Banelings coming from the north, but most of those Banelings got shot down and Solar attacking around a ridgeline. That was a big upset there for Solar's army. Maru just smashed through a vastly superior force. The unit's lost tab will be way more in his favor now. Yeah, that was a very questionable choice. I think Solar was planning on coming behind right there with more Bane Links, but I think many of them got killed before they ever reached the battlefield. Now suddenly Maru is ready to counterattack. I mean, he wanted to play the long macro game, but he says, yo, if you're gonna give me a bunch of your army, I'll test the waters and see if I can kill another one of your bases. Normally Ghost, maybe not necessarily the best unit that's sniping those expansions, 
but oh, oh my god, they're trying their best, but it's now connecting. That tank on the north is doing great damage as well. I, I think Solar might be able to get up on top of this, but he's gonna have to go for it sooner rather than later. His lurkers ran off to the north side. Uh, I don't know why the lurkers wow. didn't join in this fight, Loco. It feels like Solar is getting stretched too thin. That were a lot of ghosts that just went down at the cost of a hatchery, I suppose. A lot of Zerg units as well. I'm not entirely sure what to make of that particular fight. How many ghosts just fell? Where are the lurkers? I saw them run off to the north of the screen. I'm like, okay, there they are. The lurkers are doing a run by. Yeah. They are getting a denial on a base, but on their own. Ah, a bit unfortunate for Solar to lose a base like that. I mean, he denies the sixth, but he denies it temporarily. This is not the same as blowing up a planetary in 20 SCVs. Solar, he's got good bank, he's still got good money, and he's still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Maru, but he's got to find a way to swing back. And uh, I think, obviously, Maru and Infestors is something Serral likes at this stage of the game. I think for Solar, it's more about sandwiching an army. It's all positioning focus. He's got to get in there from two sides so Maru can't back out of these fires. He is very well upgraded right now, so Zerklings alone should already do pretty well against this planetary fortress. With the support of Banelings and Hydras, however, this expansion will surely fall. Nice move. Yeah, we are now at the phase of the game, though, where Maru has so many command centers available. Look, he just killed one of them. There's one ready to replace. Oh, Banelings on the planetary, though, getting quite a few SCVs, but I don't think he's going to be able to finish it off. This might be an overextension. Maru gets in with the oh, repair! Oh, is he gonna oh. get that? No, the Hydras tried to retreat at the last possible second, but they don't get it done. In the meantime, though, these lurkers have been working on command centers. There's another burning building, but that one also gets saved. The creep spread is starting to worry me a little bit here for Solar, because Maru is now picking up the pace even more, and it's difficult to really prioritize. Oh! There's a lot of lurkers in the door and gun right here in the middle of the map. That's all of them. Oh, that is a disaster. Solar not happy with that at all. Maru stumbles upon the jackpot there and is quick to capitalize and now he's back into this position this is Maru's favorite spot on this map he loves working this angle Solar's going to try and attack into it but those tanks they do line up deep oh. they were a bit slow to siege but there's just no links to capitalize yeah amazing target firing right there from our Terran player who's now once again marching across the map with whatever army he's got there's a little bit of a counter-attack happening as well over there at the Planetary Fortress, but the Zorklings get cleaned up. Now we're even oh. sniping down here with the Hydras. Ow, 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 ow. Those ghosts just sniping so many units down. A few of the ghosts go down, but an amazing trade. And Maru's supply surprisingly close with Solas, but of course he's got the Mass Orbital Commander, Command Center behind it. He can drop mules for days. Solar, on the other hand, is completely broke. Tactical nuke coming up as well. Maru ready to uh, insult his opponent some more here. Obviously, there's that famous game they played a while ago where the planetary, or sorry, the tactical nuke rotter ended up killing everything that the Zerg player had. Very different scenario, of course. Maru is losing a lot of his units, though. It's not like he, yeah, he's not particularly rich. He's got a ton of command centers, that's great, but he doesn't have a bank to immediately replace the units that he's just lost. Solar has beastly macro, he really yeah. does. The, the fact that he's taking so many fights like this bad and still hanging on in terms of the supply is great. It's just that this base is crucial. He can't give this base up, and so he's fighting into a meat grinder. It's such a bad situation for him to fight. A nuke even trying to get called down. Solar will take the ghost out, cancel the nuke, drop a parasitic bomb. He's going to have to keep falling back. There's just more tanks, Hellbats, and Ghosts rallying into the fight. And it feels like Maru's reinforce is just too strong. Remember, this is only part of the Terran army. A lot of it's walking across the map. This is everything the Zerg has. Well, we better talk about the Baneling bus that's coming. Hey, Luka. Yeah. <laughs> that Baneling nest is uh, a standard structure in this matchup, but normally we don't see it until quite a bit later. He's going to run up that ramp with this Zergling. He, oh. Honestly, ah, this you might a... assume that Stimpak is not done yet because the green light kept. Oh, on. he's too far outside. Maru caught cool, with his pants down. And that means the door does not get raised. Banelings are going to walk in, but Maru's got some pretty good focus fire. He's taken down four or five Banelings already, but the Lings are getting the, the surround. Grenades from the Reapers would be fantastic at this point in time as well as the Banelings are trying to hunt down whatever they can. Very good control though here by the Terran player, only losing a handful of SCVs so far. This is very respectable because keep in mind, there's a third CC on the back of this. Oh my lord, Maru, you crisp god of micro. How did you pull off this defense? It's not over yet, though. The wall is being torn down. Those Reapers are so low. 
Yeah, the Supply Depot, right? That one has to be uh, raised here if he wants to keep all of these units out. Now Solar, though, is really starting to get the damage done. Oh, he's actually down. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's trying got... to get the damage done that he wanted to deal, and this is looking better and better right now for the Zerk player. Look at that Supply Depot attempt every single time. It gets the Knight by the Lings. Yeah, he needs 100 Minerals as well, and he, he couldn't get it. Now oh. he has the Minerals, but the Lings are doing so much. The Bailey's coming in from both sides. The Siege Tank drops on him. Maru dropping the tank to take it out. Bailey's clear the SCVs at the front. The Siege Tank goes down five marines trying to hold on against an onslaught of zerglings solar says i will not go down three zero the zerglings surrounding those last few marines maru's hanging on like a champ but i don't think he's got the numbers 42 scvs have gone down i think in maru's mind right now he's like yeah you're dealing this damage but how many workers do you really have I've got triple command center. Those mules, they mine really quickly and they bring me a lot of money. So if you're doing this push, well, he's not too happy about it, but if you're doing this push off of like 25 drones or so, I actually might have a chance to get back. <laughs> he's oh, going to have to wall off the That's what we're doing? He knows he can't defend the natural Maru. That was the most tilted I've ever seen Maru yeah. look on his face, by the way. And he looked like actually frustrated. That is that is crazy. Uh, despite that, I, I think this is so clever of him. Solar busts in and he's like, wait, are you serious? <laughs> okay, I can't get up there. He's gonna have to just deny the natural and go back to droning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I think it's obviously a massive lead. You can't really reclaim the low ground here. Yeah. Maru's gonna just drop three Marines on the low ground while having Marines on the high ground covering them. This but is buildings the, are burning. This is the pro gamer equivalent of flying your CC to the corner of the map, right? I mean, it is gonna be incredibly difficult for Maru to come back, but hey, it's the World Championships. You may as well try your best to obtain the victory. And trying he is, but he's losing everything that he's been working on in this game so far. 40 drones at this point. It is critical that Solar gets back to workers because I don't think he's going to be able to bust through those, well, main structures, right? He's not going to be able to kill the factory with mainlings. No, I mean, well, yeah, you, you can, actually, yeah. if you make enough and you've got enough money maybe to, but uh, why not just drone up and get way further ahead while denying the natural? There's no reason to try to headbutt up that ramp. I love the way Maru is methodically microing this, mm -hmm. but uh, it would not be a crazy decision. Is that Maru nine kills and one Marine right there? He left 10, 10 kills, kills, nine kills, 10 kills, nine kills. <laughs> that is that is awesome. That's a 28 kill, uh, you know, three Musketeers of, uh, of Terran there. Apparently Dark is one of those. Uh, who knew? 1-1 uh, <laughs> upgrades being restarted in the main for Maru. And yeah, it would, it would not be crazy to just type GG. He's, he's no. so far behind. Like. I love that he's trying, though, right? Yeah. One of the comments we always get as casters is like, why do the players leave the game already? Well, it's because it's very difficult to win the game in the long run. <laughs> oh, the so focus fire is so sick. It's so sick, yeah. The heroes ended up going down, though. There's still two Marines inside of those Metavex. Now the structures here are gone. He's even planting a bailing there to make sure that he can't land anything in that location either. But. Yeah, this is Maru just mostly processing the loss, trying to squeeze out a victory. But he must know that it's not possible as Solar gets a point on the board. So we do have a 1-1-1 a oh, rudder opener right here for Maru. That's one barracks, one factory, and then a starboard. And the Hellion's going to veer around, see if they can get some Chuma snipes. Yeah, well, they should be able to get some if they try to target it down. Instead, they decide to, uh, they decide to continue driving straight into the natural. Oh, good drone surround. Oh, really good micro by wow. Solar. Wow. Making a very bad situation look pretty dang good right there. Only four workers at the cost of all those Hellions and that Reaper. Not a bad start here at all. As you know, also scouts exactly what the follow-up is going to be. I'm telling you, Loco, you know, similar to that Oli Moly series, I feel like whenever Maru is really aggressive, Solar shuts it down and looks really good. But when Maru goes to the late game, that's where he looks like he's on another level. Now, this is a mech transition from here. Ooh. Second factory armor, he goes down. Very exciting. So many players have only been playing battle mech out on Gressman. And I really feel a lot of the maps have enough, enough room for it and could be effective. Now, here's a cool setup. The Viking cleans up the Overlord path. The Medivac comes through to try and drop in the corner of that big main base, which Solop won't see unloading and could do massive damage. The Queen is waiting here to possibly intercept the unit like a Liberator, but she's going to be surprised when a bunch of cars show up that shoot flames at her as they do indeed now unload into oh the main base. My. How many oh. workers can he get? Beautiful oh. evolution chain is it enough right there from the Zerg, though. He's still hunting down the drones, but he's not getting them, really. Oh, my lord. Wow. Solo with some very good reactions. Once again, only loses four drones. I mean, yeah, it's still a few workers, but for three Hellions, Solar is just on point. 
And Maru, oh my lord, I don't actually think it's a mech build. No, it's Drilling Claws. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is the old school opening where you spam more Widow Mine yeah, drops than your opponent has ever seen. Units are right, but at this point, he doesn't really know. He probably assumes this is a standard play. So he does see a meta effect leave right now. There's already one on the right side of the map. A Viking here trying to just deny the Overlords, but here comes that very first meta effect drop. Oh, well, he's with Widow Mines in it. Sporkle is going to do good, but oh my gosh, the drones! Ow, 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 ow. Okay, 13 drones going down. Fantastic first wave. Solar there does shoot down the medevac. And he will get rid of that second Widow Mine, though. Nice defense. If he can hold the drone key down, he'll be good. But you know what? Mm -hmm. He's queuing up more roaches. Yeah, he's ready to go on the offense. He also just shut down his own Spire. So even though he was opting to go for Mutas here earlier, no longer going to be the play. There's our second uh, Widow Mine drop inside of the main base. Couple of Widow Mines over there get the night as well. Third base under a lot of harassment. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Going down. One of the Widow Mines didn't burrow in the main as well, actually. So oh. he's got another Widow Mine in the main that could burrow. There we go. 12 SCVs in total do go down. That Widow Mine's oh. still just waddling around Maru with Target? Target. Oh, it's just barely out of range, right? Yeah. Okay, Solar has taken catastrophic damage, but Maru's army, if we can see the units tab, I think it's about 14 Marines and one tank, Not 10 even. Marines. That is a very small army. He's pulling back from the third. He's going to put the tanks on the high ground. If you have an Overseer, then it's good, but there's a Viking, which means you can't have an Overseer to spot the high ground. Oh, there it is. If he brings that in and files the tank, it's mm. game over. But if that tank can hold on, maybe, just maybe, Maru can stop this avalanche of Roach Ravager. Yeah, these Roaches and Ravagers are well upgraded as well. They have the speed upgrade too, so they're going to do as much damage as possible. The Overseer does need to come in right now. It'll probably be moving very, very soon. Okay, he's trying to buy Lair on the retreat. That Siege tank getting so many shots in. Where's Second the tank. Overseer? The Overseer, I don't think it's on the control group. I think Solus forgotten about it. There, there we go. go. It's coming in, but the Marines are in front. These tanks are absolutely ravaging this army, Loco. Oh. Only two vials land on the tank. Maru making an amazing hold here, and he shuts that army down. Solar on the camera. You can see he's frustrated, realizing that this is a huge, huge moment. He thought he should have been able to kill Maru here, but Maru with the perfect tank marine positioning, a beautiful SCV pull. I don't know how he lost only eight SCVs. That was absolutely insane right there for Maru. He needed to get a little bit lucky, but he got it as well, right? Those siege tanks dealing so much damage. That Overseer, it provided the high ground vision he needed to actually shoot those corrosive balls at the siege tank. And you could see the panic coming in when it initially did not show up, as he indeed ended up misfiling a couple of the tanks as well. There's oh, the Overseer wow. too. Maru rubbing salt in the wound. That being said, this is still a scary Zerk army. But those two tanks on the high ground, Oh my lord, they are just destroying! Oh, and you can see Sola. GG. Take the trophy, what did he say? GG, well played. <laughs> Take the trophy instead of me. Graciously saying, all right.